What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to integrate and use ChatGPT inside of Python using the OpenAI package. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to integrate and use ChatGPT in Python today. And this can be quite useful if you are aiming to build something more complex with the power of ChatGPT. So you want to use the chat completion, uh, you want to have this chatbot, but you also maybe want to react to certain kinds of inputs or outputs. Uh, you want to build an application around the power of ChatGPT. This is what this tutorial is for. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to install the OpenAI package, which we're going to need to access the OpenAI API. So we're going to open up the command line first, and we're going to type pip install open AI. Now, in addition to this package, we're also going to need an API key. So something that allows us to authenticate ourselves to the API so that we can send requests from our account. And for this, we're going to go to platform.openai.com. I think I will have to move my camera here so that I can show you what I want to show you. Um, essentially, if you have an account, you just log in. If you don't have an account, you just create an account. But if you have used ChatGPT before, you probably have an account. And once you're here, you just click on your uh, profile in the upper right corner, and then you click on view API keys. And here, if you have a secret key already, you can just use it. Otherwise, just create a new secret key, copy it, store it in a file, and then you can load it into your script so that you can send requests to the API. Now, one thing that's important to know is that the API requests cost money. Now it's very, very cheap. You can go to openai.com slash pricing. And also before you click away, because you don't want to spend money, um, I think that when you create a new account for OpenAI, you get some free credits uh, in the beginning. So if I click on chat here, maybe, uh, where can I see that actually manage account or something like that? There you go. Free trial usage. I have $18 for whatever reason. I didn't uh, spend any money on the API yet. Uh, but you get some free credits, maybe not $18, maybe $5 or something like that. But you will be able to send some requests without having to spend money. Um, but you can see the prices here. So for ChatGPT, which is not GPT-4, it's this one, Chat. And then you have GPT-3.5 Turbo. You spend $0.002 per 1,000 tokens, uh, meaning input and output. Um, we also have the ability to use other language models, but we're going to focus here on chat. So we're going to use the chat completion, which is also what you have here. Uh, you also have a tutorial here, a text based tutorial. Um, and as of right now, this is the model that this is running on. Maybe quite soon, you're going to also be able to use GPT-4. But today we're going to have to use GPT-3.5 Turbo. So uh, let me just move back, uh, move my camera back up here. Uh, what we're going to do now once we have the API key and once we have uh, the open AI package installed is we're going to import open AI, we're going to say API underscore key equals, and then you have to load the file that you're uh, storing your uh, key in. So we're going to say open API key in my case, because that's the file that I have here with uh, my key inside of it. I'm going to open it in reading mode, and I'm going to read the key from that file. Now, what we need to do now is we need to take that key and uh, set it as the API key for open AI. So we say open AI dot API underscore key equals API key. Um, and by doing that, we now have our key, our account associated with the package. And when we send a request, we send a requ uh, request through our uh, profile. So to get a very basic response to a simple prompt, what we need to do is we need to say response equals, and then we can just use openai.chat completion. Um, and what we need to pass here is we need to pass two parameters. The first one being the model that we want to use. And we already talked about this. The model is going to be GPT 3.5 turbo. Uh, and then we also need to have messages and messages doesn't have to be just one message, it can be a message history. And the message history has to have a certain format. So what we do here is we say message equals, uh, and then we need to pass a list of dictionaries. So I have this list here. And inside of that list, I have dictionaries and each dictionary is basically just a key value pair, um, or contains two key value pairs, namely the first one being the role. So who said something? And in this case, we're going to be the user. 
that says something. And then we're going to have the second key value pair, which is going to be the actual content. And for example, I could say, um, what is the difference difference between Celsius and Fahrenheit? Something like that. And or maybe we could ask how do I convert from one to the other. But that's now one message. If I want to add a second message to the history, I can say the same thing again, role, and I think the roles are assistant, uh, user and system. Now user being us, the, the uh, actual user who sends a request to ChatGPT, the assistant being ChatGPT itself, and the system is more like um, the, the, the system is more like context information, like you are this and that. So you can go actually to the uh, tutorial here and you can see, I think some examples. Um, do we have some examples here? System, there you go. So the system would say something like you are a helpful assistant that translates English to French. And then the user would say translate the following sentence. So system just gives the assistant uh, information about their role. Um, but for now, we're just going to leave that one message here. And in order to actually uh, print a response, we need to, of course, just print a response. So there's nothing fancy about that. When you call this, um, I don't know if that's a function or a constructor, but when you call this thing, it actually already uh, sends the request and you get a response. Now, this might take some time depending on when you run this. Now, we didn't get, did I do something wrong? Oh, we need to say messages. This is plural here. Uh, we still get an empty. We still get an empty response. Let me just check why that is. Oh, okay, sorry. We need to say openai.chatcompletion.create. So this is just, uh, I think this is the class, right? Yeah, this is the class. And this is the function that we need to use to actually create uh, the request. So now it should work. And probably it will take some time. There you go. So what we get here as a response is um, Celsius and Fahrenheit are two different units of temperature measurement. The Celsius scale is used worldwide and is based on the metric system. Uh, it measures temperature using degrees Celsius with the temperature and so on and so forth. I don't want to read everything now. But you can see here that the response is also structured here as a dictionary as a sort of JSON object, where you have the choices, you have the message, uh, and you have some information about how many tokens uh, were used. So you can see here completion tokens, prompt tokens, total tokens. So we now spend money for 226 tokens. Remember 1000 tokens cost $0.002. So 0 0.2 cents, essentially. Um, yeah, so this is quite cheap. Um, we can now go ahead and uh, build basically a chat system in Python by just running a loop and constantly adding to the message log. How would we do that? Let's remove all of this here. And let's say we have a chat log which is an empty list. And we say while true user message equals input, whatever the user wants to put in. If the user message dot lower equals quit, we're going to just break out of the loop. And otherwise, we're going to say chat log dot append. And we're going to append a key value pair, which is role user and content user message. So this is going to be our message object or messages object, essentially. And what we do now again is we say response equals openai dot chat completion dot create. We say again, the model is going to be GPT 3.5 turbo. And the messages are going to be the chat log. Um, and then basically, if you want to get the actual response, if you just want to get the message instead of the whole JSON object, what we do is we say assistant response equals response choices, zero message, and then we want to get the actual content from the message. Now, what's important is, of course, since we're talking to ChatGPT and ChatGPT is able to recognize context, uh, we need to also add the assistant response 
to the chat log. Otherwise, we just have our own messages. We don't have the responses uh, of chat GPT. So what we want to do first is want to print, of course, chat GPT says something it says uh, assistant response, uh, and we need to strip it from new line characters. Otherwise, it may uh, look funny. And then we're also going to strip it from white spaces. So we're going to just get a text. Um, and then we're going to say chat log dot append and we want to append another key value pair here, or another uh, message with two key value pairs, the role being the assistant, and the content being the assistant response. Um, and of course, here, we need to also say strip the new line character and the white spaces. There you go. So that should already be it. Um, and I think think I need to just enter a message, right? So if I say here, uh, what could I ask? Um, what is the difference between an interpreted and a compiled language? And then we should get a response with an explanation, then I can ask, which one of the two is Python, for example, so I don't have to specify again, that I'm looking for the difference between interpreted and compiled languages, I can just say, okay, and um, just give me the information, what of the two is Python. So here I got now interpreted language is a programming language this code is interpreted into machine code on the fly and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and say, great, which one is Python, then question mark. And then it should be able to recognize the context because if I just ask without context, what Python is, it will tell me basically Python is a programming language, it's used for, I don't know what, and in this case, it tells me Python is an interpreted language because it recognizes the context. So that's basic chat GPT. And the good thing about this API now is that you can use it to automate things. Now, you can also just use chat GPT in the web, you don't need an application like this. But you can take this now and you can build functionality around it, you can say, for example, if certain tokens um, occur in the response or if certain uh, stuff like that, right? So if you say user message lower equals quit, you have the functionality to, to quit uh, the program, you can also add other commands, you can also say, okay, if the response is uh, containing certain words, I'm going to censor it, I'm going to um, ca cause an action because of it, I'm going to do something because of it. Um, and this is how you can use chat GPT in Python, to build more complex chatbots or more complex chatting systems. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.